pray you've had a good day. Sun's out. Got water running off the church offices and off the church. A um, lot of it's gone. It's melted. For, for us to have so much snow, it's, it's all but gone. And I, But I'm glad, and I uh, hope that you're, you're glad as well. But let's get into our word with Pastor Al. Uh, yesterday, we talked about the word anticipation and how we need to anticipate the things that God is doing in our lives, through our, through our lives. Um, and, and with the things that are going on in, in the world today, God is using his children uh, and his bride, uh, you know, Jesus' bride to do those things in which uh, he's called us to do. And uh, this past Sunday, I, I preached a message about anticipation and uh, the love that anticipates. And we, if we have a love for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you know, and and we should be anticipating what it is that he would have us do. My verse for the, or what I, one of my points in my message and the second point was anticipate the job. And that's my word today is job. Our verse for today is Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. And I've used this verse, oh, a couple months back in, but I believe it's, it's a, a verse that came to mind when I, I was thinking about this and I believe we should work and do everything that we do needs to be geared for what it is that God has us here to do. Uh, our life is but a vapor. We're here today, gone tomorrow. But what change, what difference does our lives um, equate to in the grand scheme of the Lord's plan, his sovereign plan? And I, you know, I've had to learn myself you know, as I read scripture, as I memorize it, as I apply it to my life, I listen to the Holy Spirit, and I move in a direction that uh, sometimes we we compartmentalize different things in our lives. Uh, but I have learned, and, and I strive myself more so today than I ever have, to make sure that I see that the job that I'm doing is is in in revel relevance to what God has got me doing. Uh, put aside that I'm a pastor, I'm talking about just being a child of God. Uh, but we need to anticipate this job that he has given us. And I'm just gonna review a little bit of my message. And I believe it's, it's worth reviewing because it gives us that sense of understanding about a job. Uh, I had said we need to anticipate the job and we were talking about it from uh, chapter, uh, Revelation chapter three, Verses two and three say, wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. I've not found your works complete. Okay, that's a job, a work. Uh, and it says, remember then that what you received and heard, keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. And I had stated the fact that time was short. We need to get busy. We run out of time. The Lord, I believe the, the rapture could happen today. I believe, I pray that it does happen. But there's a lot of people that have yet to hear the name of Jesus. And there's a lot of people that haven't heard the name of Jesus from my lips that I need to be telling them about it. Um, so that's the job that Jesus has given us uh, is to spread his word, to spread his gospel. Uh, you know, and we don't know the day or know the hour in which Jesus is coming. So we need to get busy. But uh, I'd read a, a passage out of Ephesians chapter two, and it was lengthy. And I think it's worthwhile. There's some of our uh, followers here on a word with Pastor Al that need to hear this passage. And I think it's important. Um, and starting with uh, Ephesians two, starting with verse one, it says, and do you and you were dead in trespassing and sin in which you were once walked. Those of us that have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we were once in the world. We lived in trespasses and sin, okay? Following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan, uh, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. When we're born, we're born into sin, Romans 3, 23, right? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we live in this life. We we are 
uh, abstract to the things of God because we don't know the Lord. And then the Lord calls us. He pulls us with the Holy Spirit. And we accept the Lord as our Savior. So something changes. And that's the reason why in this passage, right in the middle of it, it says, but God. And how many of us have those but God moments in our lives? And goes on to say, but uh, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. He's going to use us. He wants to use us, okay, for the purpose of manifesting Jesus and his divine nature, okay? You see how verses and scripture come together and they work together? And it goes on to say, for by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It's a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. And you can underline that, circle that in your Bible, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God uh, bef uh, pre prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What, did, what is it that he's asking us to, to, to walk in? What is it that he's asking us to do? That's his, those good works. And Matthew 28 tells us what that good work is. As Jesus is ascending to heaven, he, and, 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 you know, he comes there and he says, all authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Jesus has the power. It's in his name that all things happen. It's only by the grace of God, as we've just seen, that we are saved. And we can live a life calling ourselves Christians to do a job to grow the kingdom of God. But the Lord sat there and he says, all this power, this authority has been given to me. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. There's a job there. And not, not that our salvation, we have to do anything. But after we're saved, he says that we're to go out and make disciples. We're to go out and tell other people about Jesus and what he did in our lives. And we're to see them get baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But then it says to teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. That's the discipling. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. The Great Commission. We know what it is. But a commission is giving somebody a job. I commission you to do a job for me. Do we do that? I think sometimes we make excuses. I think sometimes we feel that the job's bigger than us, and it is. Um, this week's passage, I'm, we're going to be talking to the Church of Philadelphia, uh, or hearing uh, the, the, the letter to the Church of Philadelphia. And, uh, you know, the power that we have, and as we see even in that church, is small. Uh, but Luke 1, 37, Jesus says, for nothing will be impossible with God. That is a promise. He, he's given us a job to do, and he says nothing's impossible. We can go up to anybody that the Lord draws us to do. I'm not saying go out there and just, like I said, hit everybody. I used to be bad to do this. I was young, and um, I just, whoever I bumped into on the street, I just point blank, start asking them questions. And I, sometimes I think I caused more enemies than I, I drew them to the Lord. But here's the thing. If, if, if we know that, that the Lord has a job for us and we're anticipating what it is he's going to do in our lives to give us the ability, he says, ask whatever you need in my name. If it's for my will, I, I'll give it to you. So if we're doing those things, nothing's impossible. OK, now, sometimes, as I was saying, we we feel over overcome by a lot of things. We maybe we don't have the knowledge that we think we should have. We put limitations on ourselves. All the Lord asks us to do is share our story, how Jesus changed our lives. You know what? I have come to the place that sometimes if you don't have the scripture in your mind, just tell them the truth. 
Tell them about how Jesus changed your life. Tell them how through the reading the Bible, things changed in your life. How getting saved has given you hope. Uh, then you don't have to quote scripture. Later you can help them and maybe sit down with a Bible and you can both read it and learn it together. Uh, but see, the thing about it is we, we lean in our own strength. We, we, des we desire to do it in our own strength. And that's how we mess up the job. That's how we, instead of doing the way the Lord says to do it, we do it our way. Philippians 4.13, we quote it all the time. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Our strength is nothing compared to the strength in which the Lord gives us, okay? So what is job number one in your life? I mean, that's a question you have to ask yourself. I can I can tell you what I think your number one job should be, uh, but I can only speak for myself. Now, I've been called to preach and to herald the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and he told me, give me the Great Commission, and that's the reason why job one to me is to lead others to the Lord and then teach them how to go lead somebody else to the Lord. And that is what making a good disciple is. But that needs to be our job. And if we're doing that, then we're building the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And as Jesus was telling them this, they were all, you know, they were desiring food and raiment and all these. And he says, you know, if you'll do the things to grow the kingdom of God and you keep busy about that, seeking his righteousness, that, that divine nature that we talked about several weeks ago, and we continue to grow and we're doing things for the kingdom of God. Guess what? He'll take care of all these other things. They'll be added unto you. and You'll be able to do all these things. Just put the first things first. Okay. Seek first the kingdom of God. If you're saved, then you need to be seeking the kingdom to grow it by reaching your brothers or your neighbors or your friends. And those are the things that God has called us. That is our job. Um, and God wants to use you. Uh, he could send angels down. He could, he, he definitely has the Holy Spirit working. And then before I go to talk to somebody, I pray the Holy Spirit would go ahead and start plowing the ground, so to speak, so that if I plant a seed, it's going to be in fertile soil. Uh, so we can ask the Lord to help us in that, but to, he wants to use us. He wants to use our love and our compassion for a lost and dying world, we anticipate the things that we're going to be doing. I, you know, I, I, I go out and I have, and I do from time to time, just strike up a conversation with anybody about the Lord. But it has to be, uh, as we've talked about um, being a good disciple and disciple and how, how we go about that, uh, it has to be something that is is meant to be. It has to be something that uh, we have set out. Let's say, I'm going to go talk to such and such. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to have my scripture ready, and I'm going to go about it and do it. And that's how the Lord wants to use us. Moses, he wrote a psalm, uh, and, and it's Psalm 90, verse 17. I, I love this. It says, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. And establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. You see, our, our job is to do uh, the Lord's bidding, to share the gospel. He doesn't have to have us. He doesn't need us. But if we're going to be the bride of the, the Lord, and we are the church, the body of Christ, we are to do these things. We need to ask the Lord, let the favor of the Lord, our God, be upon us. Use us for the job. Let us do our job right. So back to our verse of the day, Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. So my attitude adjustment is if I'm going to be doing things for the Lord, uh, my life and, and all these things that we talked about and how he's changed our life, he's pulled us out of that dark world and he's put us on the solid rock, Jesus. And he's asked us to do a little job, okay? Just a couple verses there in Matthew 28. He says, go out, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and teaching them to do whatever I've commanded you. And he said he'd be with us. Those two things, that's, that's pretty much what he wants us to do. He's coming back. He said, I go to prepare a place for you that when I, I'll come and get you. When I, and, I, and I look forward to that. 
But here's the thing. How many are we going to be taking with us? How many are going to be there at the Bema seat because we did our job and anticipated that job in which Christ has for us? So my attitude adjustment for today's uh, word is let me look more closely to the job at hand. The job that I have in front of me. And then I'm going to seek God's hand in that job. If I can't find God's hand in that job, um, maybe I need to look at the other jobs I have going on. We need to make sure that our focus, no matter what, now I know we have to live. Don't, don't, I'm not, I'm, I want people to, you know, sometimes, like I said, we compartmentalize. Well, that's religious, that's church, that's, this is life. You know, we have to do things. Um, you know, Judy, when she's in the cooking, fixing supper for us, that doesn't seem like a whole lot doing for the kingdom. But if we don't eat, we don't have strength. And she's a good girl. She she fixes supper for me, too. Uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, I do things like shovel snow. That doesn't seem like it's doing anything. But these are things that are necessary to live. But it also shows people good character. It gives people that understanding that that we're, we're, we do work and we do have things in our lives. But here's the thing. Whatever we do, we need to be doing it heartily as to the Lord. It may not seem like it's something for the kingdom of God, but you make sure you give the Lord the credit and you look, make sure that you're doing it for the Lord. And whatever happens, happens. Uh, people might come up and just ask you why you're doing something. And he gives you that opportunity to share the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much that you're willing to use us to grow your kingdom. You sent Jesus. He did the, the work there on the cross. He died. He shed his blood that knew no sin to wash our sins away, to reconcile us to the relationship that we have with you. And because of Jesus doing that, Lord, you've, you've called us your children, and we're able to call you Abba Father. And I pray that as we go through our lives and we work and we uh, toil and, and, you know, there's a lot of things that we have to do is because of sin. But I pray that we would find ways in everything that we do to work for you and to share just the wonderful news that Jesus loves us, that you love us, that the Holy Spirit is drawing us. And I pray that you would give us that opportunity to boldly not only go to the throne there and ask for your help, but Lord, give us that boldness to share the name of Jesus to those that we come in contact that you place in front of us. And I pray that you'd help us. We can do all things through you. Nothing's impossible with you. So I ask you that you would give us that understanding. I pray that we would not cower to the weights of the world and I pray that we wouldn't hide from the things of this world but Lord that we would stand strong and, and, and shine as a light and Lord be that light and that salt that Jesus talked about and he gave us that job as well I pray that you'd use us give us that ability and we ask all these things in Jesus name amen I pray you join me again tomorrow. We're going to talk a little bit about our journey tomorrow, okay? Y'all be back. I love you, and uh, y'all just be safe, okay? Take care.